Welcome to the Young Storyteller Club. Hi, we are so happy you are here. Today's club meeting is about building a character for a story. But before we begin, let's quickly introduce ourselves again. I'm Randy, and I'm so excited to do this club with you all. Hi, everyone. I'm Cleo, and I'm so glad you're here today. Hi, I'm Madeline, and I'm so excited to work with you all. Hi there. My name is Elise, and today I can't wait to start building the characters for our story together. Hopefully, you got a chance to watch our 10-minute introduction video that we recorded for you last week. And if so, and you decide you want to be a part of the Young Stories Color Club, we are so excited that you decided to join us on our storytelling adventure. If you didn't watch the introduction video, don't worry about it. Today is the first real lesson. You are perfectly prepared to jump right in with us today. You are very welcome here, and we can't wait to get to know you better. If you haven't already sent us a video that introduces yourself, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sending that. And don't worry <laughs> if you already made a video and we might not have seen it yet. We will see it very soon. We look forward to getting to know all of you. Now, let's just start, let's get started with our today's lesson, character building. Okay. I am going to share my presentation now. There you go. So as you can see, we will be starting on character building. And each story consists of multiple building blocks. These building blocks create each story you read, write, and listen to. Think back to the last book that you read. Can you think of any specific parts of the story? I can. Last night I read The Cat in the Hat. Do you know about that story, The Cat in the Hat? It's written by Dr. Seuss. I don't. I think I've heard of it, but I've never read it. There's a movie about it, too. Oh, cool. I'm going to see if I can find the movie or the book at my library once we're done with this club meeting. But for now, can you tell me a little bit about it so that I can follow along? I'm from a different country, and when I was little, I only read stories in my home language. So there's a lot of American children's books that I missed out on. Sure. The Cat in the Hat is my absolute favorite story. It begins as the mother leaves her two children home alone. It was a very rainy day and the children were so bored. Then when they least expected it, a huge talking cat with many tricks arrives. Wow. With him, he brings the cat, thing one and thing two who destroy the house right before their mother returns home. Luckily, the cat is able to clean the house before their mother comes back, and he saves the day. All right. Thank you for telling me that story. It sounds so interesting. So to get back to the topic, story building blocks, I think I came up with one. The story took place in a house. Correct. The house on a rainy day was the setting. Can anyone think of any more building blocks to the story in The Cat in the Hat? Huh. Um, well, I know that the cat releases things one and thing two, which leads the house becoming a total mess. Yep. The action of the cat releasing the things, who then made a mess in the house which had to be cleaned up, was the plot of the story. Now, let's think about the ma final main component that would help build the story. Um, the characters? Yes, the characters were the cat... Thing one and two, the children and the mother. Okay, so we've got the cat, thing one and thing two, the children and their mother. Those are the characters. We've got the unboxing of things one and two, which makes a mess of the house. That's the plot. And we've got the house in the rain with no parents at home. That's the setting. So almost every story has those three, has those three elements, the setting, the character, and the plot. Throughout these club meetings, we are going to be working on creating all three different elements of a story, the characters, the setting, and the plot. For today, though, what we are going to start with is the characters. Who is your favorite character in The Cat in the Hat? Mine is the cat. He's so funny. 
Mine is thing one and thing two, because I like making a mess, but I'm not the best at cleaning it up. I think mine is the cat too, because he saves the day by cleaning up the mess. So a story has three very important elements. The characters, the location, and the plot, as you can see on the screen. Yes, just like a story has three elements, a character itself also has multiple elements to it. What are some things about a character that are helpful to know? Their name. And what they look like. And how nice they are, or whether they are funny or mean. Yeah, we'll call that their personality. So what they're like as a person. I think the cat in the hat was both funny and a little mean to just unleash those things without permission. Right? Personality can be quite complicated. Your character isn't limited to just one single quality. Most people have both some nice and more challenging parts to their personality, like me. Okay, so we've got a name, looks, and a personality. What else matters about a character? Or even about any person you meet in real life or that you know? I think it matters where they're from. I think a lot of things about me make a lot more sense once you know that I'm from the Netherlands. Like, maybe you would wonder about my accent otherwise, or about why I don't know well-known American things like the cat in the hat. Yeah, but it doesn't matter where you're from. Other things can matter too. Or it doesn't just matter where you're from, I should say. Other things can matter too for who you are as a person and how you live your life. Okay, so the fourth thing about a character that's helpful to know in general is like their backstory. So normally, that's just about, that just about gets you there for creating a character. Once you have a name, a sense of what they look like and what their personality is like and their background, you can start working on other aspects of the story. But in this case, there's something special about the character's background. In the Young Storytellers Club, every character gets to have one special power. Wow, so how do we pick that? Well, let's talk about some special powers. Maybe your character could fly or become invisible. Or what about if they can talk with animals? Or wait, I have another fun idea. What if they could grow really big whenever they wanted and then shrink back to normal again? If I could pick a special power, it would be that everyone would always immediately like me and would do everything I wanted for me because they like me so much. I want to be like Superman. I want to be super strong and be able to fly and basically be invulnerable. And they have x-ray vision and... Wait, 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 wait. That's a bit too much. In the Young Storytellers Club, we're going to work on a story that's a bit more realistic than that. So you can pick one special power for your character, but you can't pick all of Superman's powers at the same time. Okay, I think I'll maybe pick invisible or invulnerable, so that way no one can hurt my character. Okay, that's great. So everyone, remember this as you're designing your character. They can have one extra special power, so they can do one thing that normal people can't do but they can only have one. So pick carefully. So we've talked a lot about the personality of our characters, how a character can have a complex personality, and about having just one superpower. But I want to know what kind of name should I pick? Or what kind of name can I pick? You can pick anything you want. Well, almost anything. We don't want to tell any swear words in our story, so your character's name can't be a swear word. Yeah, but like the characters in the cat in the hat, names can be quite different. So Sally is a real name, the girl in the story that any person can have as their first name. But the cat in the hat is more like a title, like a phrase, like Sir Cooks or Sir Crooks a lot or uh, Princess Buttercup. Right? And then thing one and thing two are more like regular names. I think that's funny as well. I think that's funny as a name. All right, so that's names, but what about looks? Does my character have to be a blonde girl because I'm a blonde girl? 
I think it might be kind of fun to do something different. Yeah, we can design our characters to look any way that we want them to. So they can look like you if you want, or they can also look very different. Oh, cool. I've always wanted to have girls, so I think my character will have curly hair. All right, <laughs> cool. So I think we're ready to start working on creating our characters then. Let's move on. So this, in the next five minutes, all of us are just going to quietly sit here and work on our characters a bit. Why don't you do that too while we're working on ours? And you can work on it however you want. I think I'm going to write down some things down. I think I'm going to write down some things for myself, like some names that I like. I'm going to try and get a picture of how my characters look. However you want to create your character, just go ahead and take the next five minutes or so to start with some ideas. Okay, I'm going to click on the timer now. Hey guys, I think I want my character to have a special outfit too. Nice. I can't wait to see a picture of your outfit. Oh, I like this idea.
All right. Looks like our time is up. Okay, so do we want to share then? Yes, I, I can um, go first. Um, my character's name is Sage, and she has the ability to know when bad things are going to happen before they happen. She uses this power to prevent people from doing bad things. She wears roller skates and a mask, and her favorite color is blue. She's always in time to save the day. This is what she looks like. Oh, cool, I see the roller skates. Well, here's what I worked on. So my character's name is Mara, and I drew a little picture of their face. You can see the girls um, and their superpower. And I drew this by drawing a bunch of flags is Mara can understand all languages. So they can talk to everyone. Um, and then finally, so Mara likes to be called they. So Mara is not a he and Mara is not a she. Mara just wants to be called they. They don't want to be identified as either a boy or a girl. So that's why Mara is a they. Oh, nice. My character, Clarion, is kind of similar in that aspect. My character, her name is Clarion, and though people like to refer her to her as she, she also would like people to call her they, but she doesn't mind either way. So Clarion, she is quiet and she doesn't speak a lot because of her superpower, which is the power of suggestion. So when she speaks, people like um, are more likely to do what she says, but she doesn't like that. So she doesn't speak often. And though I don't have any physical traits about her right now, um, I do know that she has a big red jacket with a paw print on it that she wears all the time. Cool. So my superpower's name is or Jo or my character's name is Jojo. And their power is that no one can say no to them. So they no matter what question they ask, everyone has to say yes, no matter what. So their personality, they are very brave and outgoing, and that comes in handy when asking these questions that they know they have to say yes to, even though they probably, people should probably say no to them. And we talked about personalities being some good traits and sometimes they can have bad traits. And although Jojo is a very fun and outgoing person, sometimes they take, sometimes they take advantage of their superpower. So they know that they're asking questions that people, they probably shouldn't ask because they're getting like unfair advantages, but it makes their life very interesting. And all I know so far is that they have pink hair, they have blue eyes, and they're very tall because I'm very short and I would love to be tall. So my character is tall. So that's all I know so far about my character. Uh, now that we have all begun to work on our characters, the last step is finalizing them. Take your time and create a final character using the ideas that you came up with. Don't worry if it's not perfect as long as your character has a special power, a name, a backstory, a physical appearance, and a personality. They will fit in great in the plots the groups come up with. And once you feel that your character is finished, get ready to share it with us. Take a photo of your drawing showing what your character looks like and either write down their name and other information and take a picture of it or just take a video explaining your character's details. We are so excited to see your final products. I'm sure they'll be great. Then at the beginning of next week's episode, we'll show you the finished products of our characters. Thanks for joining us in the Young Storytellers Club this week, and we look forward to hearing about all of your characters. Bye! Bye. Bye.